Hello and welcome to Gabbit Media. I'm Grant Abbott and today we're working on rigging characters with Rigify. Do remember to check out the links in the description for other useful playlists from my channel and the links to my character course which takes you from nothing right through to a game ready character with rigging animation ready for a game engine. Now before we start, rigging can be very complicated. It's not really a thing for beginners, but you can certainly give it a try. I'll try and be as clear and precise as possible, but it's not always simple to explain certain aspects. Before taking on any rigging, I would suggest looking at my beginner's guide to animation playlist. And I've also got a video which details the best way to learn rigging. And in that video, I talk about it as well, but there's a really great course from Todor Nikolov about using Rigify for rigging, and it is exceptional. I learned a lot from it and it's suitable for beginners. It gets you rigging really quickly and it teaches you how to rig things that aren't humanoid with two heads or something like that. So I would definitely check that out. All the links are in the description. Okay, so here's the Deadpool character that I've made and you can find out about that course in the link in the description. But of course you can do this with any character you've created. First thing you wanna check is that everything has its scale set to one. So if I click on this object, press N and go to item, the scale is set to one. So we're okay there. There are some items I added later, such as the eyelids there. So control A and scale. Now that's set to one and the swords. They're not one at the moment. So control A, scale, control A, scale. Okay, let's set our 3D cursor to the center point. So shift S, cursor to world origin. And let's go one to front view. Now I can see the feet aren't quite square to the floor. There's a slight bulge in the base. So I'm going to select on the base into edit mode. I'll zoom in on the feet. And if I just do another loop cut, control R down there and give it a bit of substance and solidity. Let's just do the same to the other side. There we go. Now it's got more flat feet. Okay, to front view and I'm going to press Shift A to add. And then we're going to go to armature and human meta rig. Now, if you don't see that, you need to go up to edit, preferences, add-ons, type in rigify and make sure it's ticked and make sure that you've got auto save preferences there. So shift A to add, armature, human meta rig, and it will come in there. Now it's kind of in the middle of our model, so we need to be able to see it and put it in front. So we go to this armature option down here, object data properties, and viewport display, and in front. Now we can see the whole thing. Now we're ready to adjust the skeleton to our model. So for that, I go into edit mode with tab, and before you move anything around, make sure that the X axis mirror is applied. So tick that icon there. Now we can select, let's say an area like this, the arm and G to grab and rotate it and move it into position. And it will repeat on the other side. The arm's a good place to start actually. So make sure you've selected all and got it into a rough position. And then let's zoom in and we can then start moving these bones individually. So I would say the elbows around there, the wrist there, so that's good. And the shoulder is about there. Just move that up just a touch. And notice how I'm in the middle of the arm. You do want your bones in the middle. The deformations will be better that way. Let's get this one and move it more centrally. And let's come around to the hand here. Now we do want a slight bend on the arm. That tells the IK which direction the arm's going to move in and things. So in this case, it's fine to have it backwards slightly. Now notice we've got four fingers here. And the Rigify rig can be a bit of a pain if you're deleting certain parts of it but I know for a fact that we can delete one finger and we're okay. But just be a bit careful if you're thinking of deleting bones in the rig. It's really important later on when we generate the rig that the right connections are in place. I'm going to deselect this one and scale them up and just move them roughly into position. I'm going to scale in the Y, sort of spread them out and we're roughly there. Like I say, I know for a fact I can delete this whole finger because that's the sort of bone group that Rigify uses. If you want to know more about those sort of groups, then I suggest you look at the course, links in the description. So I'll continue moving these into position. Just get them roughly into position to start with, because we're going to use some snapping later on to get them perfectly in line. Okay, so we're very roughly there. Now I can use snapping, like I said, up here, turn the magnet on and change it to volume. Now that means it will go in the middle of the volume. So the volume being the finger in this case, if I press G to grab and move it down, you can see that it ends up being right in the middle of the volume. Very useful. So I'm moving these into position using that volume option. Now what I've done here, I've clicked on it, I've moved it away from the other one, and that can be very dangerous with Rigify. So I'm going to undo that and make sure I select both of those and G to grab. 
It's not always the case, but often your rig will fail when you come to generate the rig if some of these bones are detached. So just make sure all the bones are still joined together that started joined together. Like I say, this can be very confusing for a beginner, so I recommend the course. I'm just making sure there's a slight bend in the fingers like this. The other thing you need to be careful of is the bone roll. So if I select this bone and roll it around like this, so let's say I've distorted it somehow, that will actually affect the generated rig as well and we won't be able to move our fingers as easily. It's not a complete disaster, but it can just be a pain. So I'll undo that, just make sure they're in line. Okay, I'll turn off snapping for now and move some of these back into position. So this is the wrist here and this is the hand bone and that needs to come out so you'll be able to move the whole hand and the fingers with this one bone. Actually, I can keep snapping on for that one. Okay, the thumb's not looking too bad. In fact, I'll just come out here into object mode, hide the sword because you don't need that. Back into the rig, into edit mode, G to grab. And again, looking at that bone roll, making sure it hasn't twisted or deformed in any way. Okay, that's probably the hardest part. The rest is fairly straightforward. With the head, we don't need any of these extra bones at the front here, so I'll select all those and press delete. And then bones, we don't need the ears, so I'll press delete and then bones. And there's one extra face in here, not that one, but the one inside it, which is always really tough to grab. I'll try and turn on wireframe and hopefully we'll get it. Nope, still being awkward. So let's press H on this bone and then select that one. Now let's just quickly check across here. If I go to bones, it says face and we don't need a face bone. It was part of that face group. So I can press delete and then bones. Let's press Alt H to get that bone back. This one is called spine six and we do need that. It's also worth noting that on this one, if I press G to grab, it will disconnect from the one below it. So spine four and spine three. So make sure you don't do that. You'll get problems with your rig if you do. Back to front view, back to solid mode. And let's move this all the way up to the top. G then Z. So that's going to be our main controller for the head. I'll come around to the side here. These bones are still important, but we can move them right down to the base here. So G to grab in the Z axis. I'll move that down and then just start moving these down. So these neck bones, he's got no neck. So we'll just make them as small as possible. One to go to front view. And we can probably bring this bone here, the spine three, downwards slightly. So I'll select both those there, G to grab and the Z axis. Okay, so then the, let's go to the clavicle here. One to go to front view, G to grab. And we've still got snapping on. I'll turn it off for this because it might just move my shape in a weird way. But we can move that up to the top there. And it probably needs to be a little bit higher than that actually. But it should go upwards like this. These are a chest bone. These can be really helpful if you move them down to here. Then you won't get too much problems with your deformation in here. Because it will know that this area needs to be with this bone and this area needs to be with this bone. Might want to bring the arm up just a touch to about there. So thinking about where the shoulder should rotate. Okay, let's work on the legs, G then X, and then start positioning them, so the knees obviously, and the top of the legs around there. That means we need to bring these bones down, and they should be roughly in the same place as those, that's fine, and now we can start evening these out. So G then Z. Okay, we're slowly getting there. This should be in the middle of the foot, so G then X. There should always be a slight bend in it as well. And generally our whole middle is a bit too far back, so we can select all that and select those. Just be a bit careful of the disconnection there. I might just get rid of that one for now. To side view with three, G, then Y, to move that slightly more in the middle. So remember again, you need a bend on the leg I think it's to tell the IK which way it needs to go. Here's our toes, so we can bring those to the front, G then Y. 
So our toes start about there, and then G, then Y, and finish about there. This bone is the heel bone and needs to be right at the back, so touching the back of the foot. And this bone here, go to front view, and press scale. Oh, I need to actually select that one bone, so I'll undo that and just select that bone, if I can get it. <laughs> Let's come around here and get it again, front view, and scale it up. That should be the width of the foot. Again, I can't recommend that Rigify course enough. That goes through all this in much more detail, and it talks about if you haven't got a humanoid rig and so forth. Absolutely brilliant. Okay, let's just have a quick look around. Generally, bones in the middle of the mesh, and we've got those sort of bends that we need. Okay, I'll come out of X-ray mode, actually. I'm not sure why I'm still in that. And to object mode. Good idea to save your work at this point. And I always save it before rig generated or before generated rig. Okay, so with it selected in object mode, we can go to the object properties again, the armature settings here, and there's a generate rig option there. So tick that, and it worked for me fine, that's great. Now, if you get any error messages down here, you, you need to read what the error message is for a start. If you change the timeline to the info panel, then you'll get any sort of error messages in there, and you can then find the bone that it suggests is the problem, and then maybe work it out from there. If you do have any problems, I thoroughly recommend that course. That will really help you. Another problem you might have as well, if the rig comes out and let's say the head bone isn't in this position, it may be because you haven't got its scale set to one. So go to item, make sure it's scale set to one. So I did all my changes in edit mode, so my scale never changed. Okay, we should be able to now select our objects and attach them to the rig. However, I'm just going to move this rig, which is our original. So M to move to collection, new collection and spares. So we don't really need it anymore. And then I can come down and hide the spares there because we've got this new rig here and we're going to attach the objects to that. Okay, so I'm going to select everything. I'm not going to select the eyes though and I'm not going to select the swords. I'm going to do those slightly differently. So select these as well over here. Make sure your rig is selected last so that should be highlighted yellow and then control P and then with automatic weights. So that's set parent two with automatic weights. If you don't see this menu, you've probably not selected the armature last. Okay, that did that fairly quickly. So now we can press Control Tab to go into Pose Mode. Or of course, you can go to Pose Mode up here. And we can start testing the rig. So I'll select the hand. Oh, there's a bit of weight painting issue there. As you can see, it's selected some of these. But that's not too bad. G to grab. Oh, and it looks like the wristband wasn't selected when I parented to the rig. That's not a problem, out of pose mode. Make sure that's selected. Select our rig, control P with automatic weights. Back into pose mode, control tab. There we go. Now it's a little bit tricky to see my rig, so let's make sure we tick the in front option there. And then we can select all these controls. So let's select the head bone and see how we're getting on with that. It's not too bad. Obviously the eyes aren't going with it and there's a bit of weight painting to sort out. Shoulders, funky shoulders, looking good. Waist, oh yeah. <laughs> it's very important to make some sound effects and do dancing when you do this. That's looking good. We've got the foot roll at the back here as well, make sure that's working, so R to rotate. And we've also got rotating this way, so R then Y. And that's looking good as well. Generally speaking, it should be R to rotate for most things except the IK handles at the end, so they're G to grab. So the feet has an IK and the hand has an IK here. And it should default to IK. Oh, and lastly, the big square in the middle is G to grab as well. But the rest should be rotation. Okay, the last thing to check is the fingers. These are the more tricky ones. If I press S to scale on these, you can see they curl in. And that's working okay. You want it to curl in flat like this, and that's why we needed the bone roll in the correct location. So I can select all these fingers and just press S to scale, and that should curl them in. Oh, not that one, because I've already done that. That's good, and we can select them all and press R to rotate as well, but press X twice, and then they'll be going in the local X axis, and they'll be sort of curling into a fist there. That's not too bad. I'm just thinking about grabbing the sword, you see? Same for this, same for the thumb, S to scale, but here we'll need to rotate it round so it goes into a fist like that. And that's not worked too badly, so that's good. If I go to object mode, 
and then bring back the sword with Alt H. Let's bring back my reference images as well. We'll just select those and press H to hide. We can see whether we've grabbed the sword properly. Not quite, but we'll move that into position and that's not too bad, is it? We'll attach the sword to the rig in the next episode. Okay, so there's a few more things to do, but we're almost there. So I'll leave the swords and the eyes for the next episode. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.